Welcome back to our study of fundamentals of operating systems based on the textbook operating system concepts 10th edition by Silbershots, Gagne, and Galvin published by Wiley Publishing. In the last few lessons we have been discussing page replacement policies. In this lesson we're going to begin a discussion of one of the problems that we deal with with page replacement policies and that would be thrashing. So let's get started. Consider what happens if a process does not have the minimum number of frames it needs to support the pages of a working set. A working set is a set of instructions that tend to work together and sometimes tend to repeat. In this situation, the process will quickly page fault. At this point, it must replace some page. However, since all these pages in this working set are in active use, it must replace a page that will be needed again right away. Consequently, it faults again very soon, and again, and again, replacing pages that it must bring back in immediately. This high paging activity is called thrashing. A process is thrashing if it spends more time paging than executing. As you might expect, thrashing results in severe performance problems. Consider the following scenario, which is based on the actual behavior of early paging systems. The operating system monitors CPU utilization. If CPU utilization is too low, we increase the degree of multiprogramming by introducing a new process to the system. A global page replacement algorithm is used. It replaces pages without regard to the process to which they belong. Now suppose that a process enters a new phase in its execution and needs more frames. It starts faulting and taking frames away from other processes. These processes need those frames though. So they also fault taking frames from other processes. These faulting processes must use the paging device to swap pages in and out. As they queue up for the paging device, the ready queue empties. As processes wait for the paging device, CPU utilization decreases. The CPU scheduling sees the decrease in CPU utilization and increases the degree of multiprogramming as a result. Oops. <laughs> the new process tries to get started by taking frames from running processes, causing more page faults and a longer queue for the paging device. As a result, CPU utilization drops even further and the CPU scheduler tries to increase the degree of multiprogramming even more. Thrashing has occurred and system throughput plunges. The page fault rate increases tremendously. As a result, the effective memory access time increases. No work is getting done because the processes are spending all their time paging. This situation is shown in the figure on the right, in which the CPU utilization is plotted against the degree of multiprogramming. As a result of multiprogramming increases, CPU utilization also increases, although more slowly, until a maximum has been reached. If the degree of multiprogramming has increased further, thrashing sets in and CPU utilization drops. At this point, to increase CPU utilization and stop thrashing, we must decrease the degree of multiprogramming. We can limit the effects of thrashing by using a local replacement algorithm or priority replacement algorithm. As mentioned earlier, local replacement requires that each process select from its own set of allocated frames. Therefore, if one process starts thrashing, it can't take frames from another process and cause the latter to thrash as well. However, the problem is not entirely solved. If processes are thrashing, 
they will be in the queue for the paging device most of the time. The average service time for a page fault will increase because of the longer average queue for the paging device. As a result, the effective access time will increase even for a process that's not thrashing. To prevent thrashing, we must provide a process with as many frames as it needs. But how do we know how many frames it needs? One strategy starts by looking at how many frames a process is actually using. This approach defines the locality model of process execution. The locality model states that as a process executes, it moves from locality to locality. A locality is a set of pages that are actively used together. A running process is generally composed of several different localities which may overlap. For example, when a function is called, it defines a new locality. In this locality, memory references are made to the instructions of the function called, its local variables, and a subset of global variables. When we exit this function, the process leaves this locality and the variables and local instructions of the function are no longer in active use. We may return to this locality later. We see that localities are defined by the program structure and its data structures. The locality model states that all programs will exhibit this basic memory reference structure. Note that the locality model is the unstated principle behind the caching discussions that we've had so far. If accesses to any types of data were random rather than pattern, caching would be useless. Suppose we allocate enough frames to a process to accommodate its current locality. It will fault for the pages in its locality until all those pages are in memory. Then it will not fault again until it changes localities. If we do not allocate enough frames to accommodate the size of the current locality, the process will thrash, since it cannot keep in memory all the pages that it is actively using. Well, I think that's enough for this set. Let's uh, take a break now, update our study guide, and when you are ready, come on back and we will move into a more discussion of the working set.